All right, it is time. We shifted it by a day to accommodate Francis' travel schedule. You hear the music. It is time for the crossover with Donnie and Dolly, Don Taylor and Rick Dollywall. Uh, you see him every day, 10 to noon on Czech TV. And we are very pleased to be joined by the newly minted <laughs> official member of the BC Sports here, here. Hall of Fame, Don Taylor. And he'll start by saying congratulations and thanks for making time for us, uh, despite your new status as a Hall of Famer, Donnie. Yeah, I got my scarf here. Did you guys want to see it? Uh, there you go. Why isn't it there on? It is. You got to wear it. Always you got to wear it. Side. Yeah, put okay, it on. I'll, Let's I'll see. I'll throw it on. If you insist. Throw it on. We do. If you insist, I, I will. Hey, and I know you guys have some nice things to say a, a lot, and uh, I, I really appreciate it. And uh, thanks to everybody at, at, at 650. It's been great. Did you go over, Donnie? I, Donnie I came to the... work in a limo this morning. Limo. <laughs> <laughs> You're, are you tired of this already, Rick? You're tired. <laughs> You're tired of all the congratulations oh, no. and everything. <laughs> no, it can go on forever. He uh, he deserves it. I uh, I've known him uh, for 26 years. I said my piece on the show yesterday, um, and and I'll say it again. Uh, you can't have longevity in our industry without you know. <laughs> you can't. You can't. <laughs> His creativity is out, uh, out of this world, you know, and uh, his passion, enthusiasm is as good today as it was on his first day, you know. And uh, you, didn't, just, you didn't mention I've been laid off like 14 times. Uh, who cares about <laughs> layoffs? I, I, well, I got, hey. That's the most impressive thing is that I've lasted this long despite being laid off 14 times. No, there is nobody that deserves it more than Donnie. And I. my biggest question yesterday uh, was, guys, why Why did it take so long? Uh, like, yeah, yeah. I mean, what's going on here? You know, like, what's going on here? And, reaction. And... And and unlike Drantz there, uh, Donnie had, uh, paid his dues, went up to Dawson Creek, you know, worked for uh, three ninety nine an hour. Yeah, you know, that's what we did. Donnie and I went up north. We paid our dues, and uh, it all started uh, up north, uh, uh, Donnie and Dawson Creek. But no one is more deserving Creek? in this market. Rick, where'd you pay your dues? Uh, it was Dawson Creek. Yeah, dumb, dumb. It's five, no, yeah, he, five hours he was north. In the, he was in the TV series, not the city. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're Vanderbeeking me hey, here, Dredd. Dolly. I, hey, Dredd. Take this off now. Dawson <laughs> Creek is five hours north of Prince George. You might want to go up there. N Northern people are really nice. And then you get to Dawson Creek, and another 45 minutes you get to Fort St. John. That's where I started. Donnie started in Dawson Creek. A lot of good people up north. A lot of good people. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Thanks, Rick. No, 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 <laughs> no debate here. If you guys want to leave your jobs and go up there, I think you should. Yes, yes. I, I don't I, know if uh, there's any radio stations left up there. There are. I, I mean, I mean, Dolly Wall giving me a swift kick in the Yamaguchis. Uh, just want to just wanna ask you, Dolly. Yeah. I, I put out the yeah. call for people's favorite Don Taylorisms. Because uh, I was suggesting a couple, a, a couple that stuck out to me, uh, including one where Miroslav Shatan scored his 13th of the year to end it in overtime. And, and your highlight call was, Shatan uh, scores his 13th to end it. Does that unsettle anybody else? Uh, do you have a favorite when you think back? Is there any that stands out to you? Uh, yeah, there are a couple. I don't know if I can mention them <laughs> on, on the air. But, uh, yeah. Is Jeff Kent involved yeah, it, in one Let of me them? just say it was it was yeah, it was uh, different times. Let's let's just say this. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I I'm working with Rick here, so clearly I uh, you know like uh, I'm I'm a big fan of his and his people. Okay, let me say this. There was a receiver, a high school receiver back in the day who had whose name I'm going to get to in, in a second. Uh, I I know um, this one. I know it, where this I believe going. it was Abbotsford it was Abbotsford High, and I don't know what came over me, but I said the quarterback, whoever, whatever his name was, and I apologize for not, remembering, uh, for not remembering, he drops back and looks for a man deep, <laughs> and uh, wouldn't you know it? He's got a man deep. Man deep at wall makes the, <laughs> makes the catch and, and for, for a touchdown. And now, d d again, different times, I've met man deep since then. He mm. loved it. That was one there of my favorite go. lines. There you it, go. It came out. It came out of nowhere. That was one of my favorites. And There's that, that creativity again, guys. Yeah. And, okay. You yeah. know, again, that, that's creativity. Different times. Uh, there was the Mighty Ducks incident, which we don't have to get into uh, <laughs> right, right now. But there, there was a whole lot there. 
You know what? I, you know what I found over the over the years, guys, and I'm sure you guys in your broadcasting years, uh, years, uh, you 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 feel the same way. I think it's not so much you know you know how you how well you prepare, although that's really important in our business. Yeah. It's it's how you do after you screw up, you yeah. know, or how you mm. do uh, uh, on the spot, and how you can recover from something that might be considered a, a negative moment. And, that that that's something I think I've prided myself on. I think I've done a fairly good job at, and you guys are are, are right there uh, when it comes to that sort of thing. I always like those moments when when everything's chaotic and you manage to recover. I love that stuff. A you couple more things uh, about Donnie. Uh, uh, entertainment. You guys do a show. We do a show. He understands that it's just not talking about the Canucks twenty four seven, right? It's how do you do a show? Nobody does a show better than him in this market. He understands that, and his knowledge of sports in this city is second to none. He, he was he was rattling off guys that played in the nineteen sixties okay. in Vancouver. All no, right. you're yes. saying I'm old. No. And that's fine. I, hey, yeah. how, do you think I'm not old? I'm the rocking chair is not far from me. I'll tell you. Listen, uh, uh, but uh, Thomas. His knowledge of of, of uh, Dunk Wilson passed away, uh, Canuck mm-hmm. uh, goaltender, and Donnie could talk about Dunk Wilson for like 10, 20 minutes. And it's that appreciation of Vancouver sports and all the people, not just like, you know, the 82 Canucks, 85 Lions, the new S Bruins, uh, the soccer bowl. This guy knows it all. I mean, there isn't anybody in Vancouver sports going back to the late 60s. Uh, you know what? Uh, I will say something that I have the advantage mm-hmm. that not everybody has because of where I grew up. I talk a lot about yeah. Burnaby. I lived very close to the Coliseum, the Peony uh, Grounds and, yeah. and Empire Stadium and the old Peony Forum and the Agrodome and all the sporting events and concerts that went on there. It was a great place to grow up and within a you know, short, yeah. short drive, short walk even uh, to go there. So that was a big advantage. So a lot of those memories are because of where I grew up, yeah. so close to uh, what was the hub of sports in Vancouver, Callister Park too. Speaking of uh, old Canucks goalies, Donnie, if – Casey DeSmith keeps providing solid backup goaltending for this club. Can we call him Suitcase DeSmith? Or would that be an athlete oh, to the oh, old Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're that's talking, uh, of course, we're referring to Gary Suitcase Smith, who moved yeah. around a lot in his NHL career and made a real memorable stop in Vancouver. He mm-hmm. was the Canucks' first ever Hart Trophy candidate in, huh. in 1975. I think Bobby Clark won that year. But uh, he was a really good goaltender, uh, left in a trade under some really interesting circumstances that we don't have <laughs> time to get uh, get into. But maybe, maybe you know the story. Hey, well, uh, was Dunk look, Wilson the Tanner goalie? Tanner Pearson's been see? really good. Was that Dunk Wilson? Well, I the think goalie that was pretty much see? every Canuck goaltender. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but there was one for goal a while there for a there, while. There was no, one goalie George, in particular. I think it was, it was George. It was George Gardner, I believe, who had That's trouble right, George with his Gardner, yeah. uh, with his right. with his vision. <laughs> What a, what a character he was. And he went back to the old uh, Western Hockey League uh, days. Hey, you know what? Just with the Canucks here, if I can, you know, get off, you know, my yeah. career for we'll, a second. We'll, yeah. But Tanner Pearson's been, been yeah. you know, pretty good. A really good start. What, five points in five games yep. for the Habs? And nobody's really complaining about it in Vancouver because of what you just talked about, Thomas. Yep. Case that dismiss has been uh, darn good, and, and they need him. The... Well, the team's playing well too, right? So if it'd be one thing, maybe if they're two yeah, and four yeah, yeah, instead yeah. of four and Seven, two, yeah, that helps. You, yeah. you might hear a little bit. Yeah. But and I think also probably people recognize maybe not a, there probably wasn't a road forward here for Tanner Pearson and the team, so it kind of is what it is, right? But great to see for Tanner Pearson. I think yeah. you'll also hear about it if the Habs are able to get like a second mm. or a first for him at the deadline. I mean, a first Ooh. would be a haul, but like a second round pick for him at the deadline, then you'll start to hear it. I think, especially if the Canucks don't Plus continue the third to round capitalize. Pick. Yeah, right. Off their off their solid start, right? I mean, yeah, if they if they turn one year of Tanner Pearson or even 50 games of Tanner Pearson into a third and a second, I think you'll start to hear Canucks fans be like, Ooh. why aren't we doing that? Especially if this team isn't contending, you know, pretty high up the Pacific Division uh, order. What, what did you guys think? I mean, I'm just back off the road. What did you guys think of what you saw from the Canucks, especially in that last game in Nashville where you was impressed as I was? Uh. The 17 shots only against. I think that's the first time in eight years they've only allowed 17 on the road, Thomas. Um, I'll tell you what I like about them right now is their plus uh, goal differential right now is plus eight, their goal differential. Um, That's pretty impressive. And, you know, there's only three teams in their division that have a plus in that. 
Um, I, I love the fact um, they're playing better defensively. I know there was a couple of games they gave up over 40 shots. There was a couple over 36. But if this coach, and he continues to grind, I love talk it, and he grinds away, uh, Thomas and Jamie, on even after wins, we still got to be better. I don't think he will ever let them get complacent. Like, even after victories, yeah, okay, we won, but we still got to do this. I love his teaching. I love uh, the entire coaching staff and that we're teaching these young players. Um, so that's good. The other thing I want to, uh, if you guys don't mind, talk a little bit about is the farm team. Uh, Pod Colson, Please. we know what happened with him last yep. night, right? Yeah, Ian McIntyre just tweeted that uh, he saw him walking at the rink and he's doing fine, so that's really good. But I, I want to talk about the decision to put Pod Colson in the minors in the first place. A lot of guys, Donnie and I talked about this on the show. A lot of guys get sent to the minors, they get uh, deflated, lose confidence, they pout, they cry. I love the fact he went down there, five goals, five games, got an assist on the Baines goal early in the first before he got hurt. Love that. Uh, with his attitude. Attitude makes or breaks more human beings than anything in the world. And that guy's attitude right now, going down there was great because you know a lot of guys go down to Abbotsford, they sulk and they cry. They call their agents and agents got to call the GM. And and we've seen that song and dance many times before. Mm. But this guy goes down. He produces. You know, he's got five goals in five games while six last night. So I'm pretty happy about the development of him. Our Steve Baines, uh, guys, his development, Donnie mentioned he's leading the team in points. Mm -hmm. Um, This, you know, he he leads the Western Hockey League in scoring. First year pro, he had to figure it out and realize that's not my, that's I'm not going to lead the American League in scoring. And he he learns the the play without the puck, the defensive side, bottom six. Now he's come in, he's scoring points. That's another positive story down there. So I think a lot of good things are happening on the farm, but I, I, I like what Pod Colson's done, the attitude. I like what Baines has done there as well. I thought you were going to go through the whole roster there. Yeah, what do you want me to? I, hey, <laughs> no, it's somebody just a Google. Wingers. Somebody got Google wingers who else coming. is doing bad. They've got wingers coming, yeah, and they you got know Rick coming. loves his wings. Yeah. <laughs> oh. it's, a, it's a great plug, though, because we've got hey, Drance, uh, Ryan Johnson. Hey, don't get me Gordon. Don't, don't get you goring? Yeah. Drance, don't get me <laughs> goring gore or I'll light you up like a Christmas tree. <laughs> uh, we've got Ryan Johnson coming on later, so we're we're going to talk to him about Pod Coles and Baines and a lot of the good oh. things that are going on down there. Would so. you say we have RJ waiting in the wings? Yes, we definitely have RJ waiting <laughs> in the wings. Yeah. Ooh, good. Oh. That's good. Oh. Your point yeah. about talk it, though, Rick, because I agree, and I was going to say I thought one of the most yeah. impressive things about the road trip beyond the play on the ice, it feels like he's pushing all the right buttons now. And you even think about after the yeah. Philly game, Hard on the team, but then he steps back, yeah. gives them some space, and as you pointed out, still sticking on them a little bit even after wins. It feels like yeah. he's doing a really good job getting his message through. Everything he's doing seems to be working right now in terms of how he's talking to his team. But he, he, Thomas mentioned something earlier that I think was, if the Canucks indeed do have a great season, there, there's a moment in that Nashville game where something they can build on. And, and the road trip and Rick talking, calling them soft and then recovering from yeah. that. And, the you know, the day of professionalism, the day off. And obviously they, uh, they, they managed to recover from a day off in Nashville, which not a lot of NHL players uh, would. But that third period, Thomas, that you talked about and the two late penalties, you know, mm. with their PK, which has been, you know, questioned or in question uh, because of what happened uh, last year. I thought that was a great, just a great moment. Them being able to kill off those uh, two late penalties in, in the category of something that just would not have happened last year or the last couple yeah. of years. Yep, that's so true. I thought that, that was really important. Maybe that's a moment, a third period that they look back at and, and say, man, that, that was, and I realize Nashville's not going to win the Stanley Cup, but that's a moment they could really build on. I think Nashville's their peer, though, and and sort of one of the parts of the Canucks start, too, that's beginning to capture my attention here is, you know, we've seen Seattle regress. Uh, They're struggling to score. We've seen the Alberta teams um, tossed into some early season chaos. Nashville looks like a team that should be Vancouver's equal, and Vancouver just, you know, handled them like a kid brother, held them at arm's length as they sort of waved their arms about wildly. Um, (laughs) I mean... There's a, there's an extent to which it's not just that the Canucks have done well, it's also that some of the teams we thought might be in the running with them have looked, um, right. you know, n- not quite like the, the robust competition we expected. H- has that changed um, your view of them, gentlemen? Are you looking around and sort of handicapping the Canucks against the rest of the Pacific and the West and thinking, man, uh, you know, if they can play like this, I kind of like their chances. 
Yeah, and, and you know, you expect Edmonton to come back in some yeah. way, especially when McDavid gets gets healthy. But look, like when we reeled off the important things, the keys to a, a good season, you know, one was Thatcher Demko's health, uh, having Rick Tockett for an entire campaign and getting what he's all a bit about. But number one on the list might have been a good start. Yeah. Like for a lot of people, like you get off to a good start, don't start with seven straight losses like they did last year. They're four and two. That was one of the keys. Now they have a three-game homestand. You build on that. How can you not look at it and say it's it, it's positive? It's six games, but I like their schedule. I, the five of the next six are at home. I think there's a lot of winnable games here, and I and you you you, you hope that Edmonton continues to have their problems. Uh, Seattle I, is 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 a surprise to me, guys. Yeah, me Seattle too. had 100 points last year. They've they've really started slow, and 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 their mm-hmm. goals for has been an issue. But they did go into Detroit and have that big win the other night. So uh, look at the division right now is looking good for the Canucks, and right now they're second. But look at Vegas, seven and zero. Yeah, oh, I, know. I mean, who would have thought they'd start out? I mean, Thomas, uh, they are the Stanley Cup champs, but not many Stanley Cup champs start the next season as seven and zero. Well, and this remains my my sort of concern, I guess, right? The only thing that I'm still concerned about, because I, I like how the Canucks are moving the puck. I like how they're defending. I like the work ethic uh, that we're seeing so far. But my, my, big, my big picture question remains, like, you look at how good the really good teams in this league are, and how does this team get there, you know, given their prospect system, given the expiry of Her- Heronic and Pedersen? I mean, Vegas is proof positive of just, like, how good you have to be to compete with the best in the league. I think for the start, though, yeah. like not just important for the team, but I don't know. I don't know about you guys, but I've noticed just talking to people. I think it's gone a long way to get fans on board, right? Like, there's a real sense of excitement around this team that's been so yeah. hard to buy into over the last couple of years because you get excited for the start of the season, and then it fl- falls flat immediately. And look, it, it, you know, if they go on a losing streak, it could all turn around. But I've noticed people really starting to get on board and just excited to have a team that they feel like they can root for with some confidence in again. Yeah, and uh, you know, look at what the Vancouver Canucks are doing, what the Abbotsford Canucks are doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Lakaramaki is doing yeah. some special things overseas. Scored again uh, the other day, I, I believe. Uh, we landed. Everything seems to be really, really positive for this organization. When, when's the last time we could say that? Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, on, honestly, it's I guess maybe you know the Boudreaux bump, and that was about it. But that turned out to be a, a mirage. So yeah, it's special. Well, even even right then, now. I wasn't seems saying to be positive anyway. stuff then. Just want to, just want to. Shockingly, <laughs> I wasn't. I you wasn't were the only one. I remember that. I wasn't impressed. <laughs> You're the most <laughs> negative man in the world. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm more impressed now than I was then. For what it's worth, but I didn't buy that one. It, it seems more well, real. It seems more. I, real. I hate yeah. to be a Debbie Downer here, but is that the phrase, Debbie Downer? Let's yeah. go oh, with yeah. that. Okay. You nailed Saturday it. Night anyway, <laughs> S- everyone yeah, okay. knows your references. So are sick, I'm bro. still. Uh, yeah. Just stop, stop, stop. <laughs> Anyways, uh, my only concern right now is after Heronic on the right side. Is yeah. like, how do you, you know, are you going to, how long can you go with Friedman and Myers? Myers has been dropped to the third pair, 13 minutes, last two games. Um, and, and Friedman was in the American Hockey League. I mean, nothing against the guy, but he was in the American Hockey League for another franchise a week ago. And now he's the second pair right guy playing with Cole. I wonder how long the Canucks can go with Friedman and Myers in those two slots uh, or, or try to address uh, some improvement there. Uh, guys, we'll let you go after this because uh, I know you got to get to the parking meter, Rick. But, I mean, is, is Ethan – I know you've said they're still involved in Ethan Bear. They're still talking. Is that the only plan B, or is there is there a possibility of other help at, at, uh, well, on you, the right side of yeah, the blue you, line at some point? You, uh, Jamie, Jamie you got to think they're prob- probably looking all over the place. Yeah. But, I mean, Ethan Bear, I checked in again last night. They're st- definitely still in on him, but – he he doesn't get here till December, guys. Right. You know, and that's if everything goes maybe. Yeah. 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 And Donnie, that's if everything goes right in his rehab. Yeah. And you have to figure out the space to sign him. Right? I mean, that's that's the other thing well, here. And uh, sorry, go. That's where Garland but that's where Garland comes yeah. in. You need that the savings from that Garland trade to go get Ethan Bear if that's the way they want to go. And remember, too, if it's a signing bonus, right? If it's all base level, uh, all base salary, no big deal. But if he ends up getting some sort of signing bonus, which you'd think he'd want, given that he's going to take a pay cut from the insurance payment to sign, right? 
um, that'll get prorated. So, for example, if he signed for $2 million with a 50-50 signing bonus salary split um, in, in mid-November, you're looking at more like $2.2 million that the Canucks would have to clear to yeah. fit him in. Fellas, we'll let you go. That's uh, right. Donnie, That's congratulations on. again. So well-deserved. Thank and, you very uh, much, guys. Thanks for coming on, and we're happy to celebrate it with you. Uh, we'll talk to you guys again next week.